Hey y'all, welcome to Virtual Earth Day and I am Lauren, the Outreach Educator here again. And we're going to have a brief presentation about what Earth Day is, what it means, and also how it applies to all of us. So let's get started here. All right, so the first Earth Day was in... Yeah. Welcome to Virtual Earth Day, oh, and wow. I am Lauren, the Outreach Educator. Technical difficulties. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Lots of moving parts over here. All right. So the very first Earth Day was in 1970 um, on April 22nd. So today is the 50th anniversary. Um, and Earth Day really marks the anniversary of the birth of the modern environmental movement. Basically, um, people started demanding that everyone start caring about our Earth and our planet and env environmental issues. And um, essentially, Senator Gaylord Nelson from Wisconsin is credited as the founder of Earth Day because he really took that to heart and uh, started it as an official movement. Now, something that's very striking to me when I was doing this research is that the very first Earth Day recruited, recruited 200 or 20 million Americans, which was 10% of the country's population at that time. That's a really incredible turnout um, for the first day of one of these types of holidays. Um, and they all came together on Earth Day to support common environmental issues. Now I have two pictures or images of um, newspaper headlines and front pages at that time. And you can see that these are two images of um, places in New York where the streets were flooded with people. And essentially these people were demanding that people pay attention to Earth Day. So, um, Earth Day also um, really started a lot of environmental legislation. Uh, people started demanding it, and so politicians started listening, and that's a really great thing. Um, that top image kind of um, makes me chuckle because uh, that guy is holding up a sign that says, science is actually useful. Um, and I think that some of us might be able to relate to that sign today. Um, so the end of 1970 saw the creation of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and that's really, really uh, monumental. The EPA is a huge part of protecting the environment and helping our planet. Um, so happy birthday to the EPA. Um, it also saw the passage of the first environmental laws of their kind, like the National Environmental Education Act, the Occupational Safety and Health Act, and the Clean Air Act. Um, so every day, or, or I'm sorry, every year Earth Day has a theme and uh, the very first Earth Day, they were committed to asking um, for clean air legislation. Um, two years later after Earth Day, Congress passed the Clean Water Act. So that year was clean water was the theme. Um, and then a year after that, Congress passed the Endangered Species Act, which of course um, protects uh, animals whose populations are unfortunately very low um, to try to help them repopulate, um, as well as the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, which actually protected people and animals. Uh, a lot of those things were being used a little bit more liberally, um, and so some people recognize that those things can be harmful to us, not only to our planet, but also to humans, and so um, they demanded that something be done about that. Um, in 1990, Earth Day went global and involved 200 million people over 141 countries. That's really incredible. In 20 years, it grew, um, you know, 10 times in size. Uh, and then in 2010, just 10 years ago, it grew to 75,000 global partners in 192 countries. That is really spectacular. So let's talk about Earth Day today. So today, Earth Day is recognized as the largest secular observance in the world. That means it is a non-religious um, observance. Uh, there are more than a billion people that engage in Earth Day in some shape or form, 
which is just incredible. So everyone listening right now, you are part of that 1 billion people. Um, Earth Day in the past has generated a lot of forward momentum for environmental causes, and the hope is to continue that progressive change going forward. Now, this year, the theme is climate action, and EarthDay.org describes this as um, essentially a very pressing topic, um, and it's, you know, sort of the paramount thing on everybody's minds in the environmental world. Um, and so it only seemed um, appropriate to have it as the 50th anniversary theme. So climate change represents the biggest challenge to the future of humanity and the life support systems that make our world habitable. That's really important. Um, so let's see what this year brings. I am looking back at the past and seeing how influential Earth Day in the past has been gives me a lot of hope for this year for climate action. So that's pretty cool. Now, I know that this year um, there's a global pandemic happening, which means that um, a lot of Earth Day is now happening digitally. So EarthDay.org usually lists um, all of these in-person celebrations, information sessions, festivals, etc., on their global map. Literally, they show a map of the globe and they show you exactly where you can go find all of these things all over the world. Uh, but this year, they're encouraging those events to go digital in light of COVID-19, which is very appropriate. Um, and so now their map shows digital events all over the globe um, instead of in-person ones. And this one is featured on that website as well. So if there's anybody watching that found us through EarthDay.org, welcome. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about Earth Day during pandemic. Obviously, then past there are not people you know, parading through the streets um, this year in large gatherings because, of course, that's not reasonable for this year. But we are seeing a lot of stay-at-home orders, social isolation, physical distancing, self-quarantine. So let's see how our um, new habits have affected our planet during this time. So overall, countries are reporting things like improved air quality, cleaner waterways, a reduction of landfill contributions, which was very interesting to me. Um, there's also lower pollution and greenhouse gases being admitted. So New York City actually reported a 50% decrease in pollution um, compared to last year, and China's emissions fell 25%. Uh, BBC.com says that overall 2020 may see a drop in global emissions of 0.3%. That is incredible, guys. I know that 0.3% does not seem like a very large number, but usually global emissions grow. <laughs> usually they don't drop. So that's um, really, really impressive. Now I want to show you guys some images of um, this change. So this is a NASA image showing the emissions over China. The left side image um, is from earlier this year slash the end of 2019. And the one on the right is from March, 2020. So um, China has been shutting down a lot of factories because um, of the pandemic. And so there are much, much less emissions from coal being burned. So essentially those yellow spots are actually from nitrogen dioxide, which is um, emitted when you are creating electricity and also um, from burning fossil fuels like in cars. But with everybody staying home um, and walking more, we're seeing a change over you know, a dramatic place like China. So this is a very dramatic image um, of the air pollution in India. So the image on the left is from um, 2019 and the image on the right is from just this past March. So something that's very striking to me is that you can see that big arch, right? But look in between the big arch, the smaller arch you can't see in the left image and you can see in the right image this is a really gleaming example of how reducing our emissions can pretty quickly help our air quality. You know, here's another image from Italy. Uh, NO2 is nitrogen dioxide, just like I said um, from before, from electricity generation, as well as um, fossil fuel burning. And, you know, Roman Naples have decreased 
um, their overall um, air, or sorry, they've, they've reduced their emissions, right? But over Milan, what a dramatic difference. All right, so this was very striking to me. So this is a NASA satellite image that shows a 30% drop in air pollution of Northeast US. So this is from um, March 2015 to the 2019, and it's an average. Um, and this is again showing NO2. Um, and this is March 2020. Um, now, if you'd like to see those side by side, check that out. That is quite the difference. Now I'm from New Jersey, right? So <laughs> when I first saw this image, I was like, oh my gosh, I live right outside of Philly and that's a pretty dark purple area. Um, but if you notice, it's improved. And I, I just, I wanna leave this up for just a second for you guys to scan your eyes over all of those little bits and pieces. A 30% emissions reduction is really incredible. I mean, look at Massachusetts. Massachusetts basically doesn't have any. Wow, really cool. So guys, um, those images are very striking and they're very powerful, but I wanted to make it very clear that a global pandemic should not be praised as an environmental triumph. I know that a lot of people right now are like, look what we're doing, we should always live like this. And a pandemic is not a time to think about those things as like we've made it. There are millions of people that are dying. People are losing their jobs and the economy is suffering. And none of those things are good from the pandemic. But this is sort of like a case study of what would happen if we all dramatically changed our behavior. Um, so it makes you think about what we are capable of as a species if climate change was presented as the threat that it is. Now the pandemic is a enormous it's an enormous threat, of course. And climate change is debatably as an enormous um, threat environmentally, but I don't think that it's getting, um, I'm, I'm not sure that it's being represented in the same light as, as threatening. Um, but the light at the end of the tunnel is that we as a species are capable of change. That's a bright side to this. Now, um, Donna Green, who's an associate professor at a climate change research center in New Zealand, uh, told CNN, it shows that at the national or international level, if we need to take action, we can. So why haven't we for climate? And not with words, but with real actions. And I think that that was a really great quote, which is why I highlighted it. So let's take this example and let's all get through this pandemic and I really hope that everyone's healthy and staying safe but let's remember this as like I said a little case study of what we are capable of and how these changes these big huge dramatic changes can happen if we all work together um you know if I just self-isolated that would not affect the air quality very much right but if we all work together and we're all doing this together, it can make an enormous impact. So um, I think the timing of the pandemic and these results for the planet is sort of interesting um, and it's timing for the 50th Earth Day. So in that spirit, what can we do it after this pandemic when we're all let out of our houses and this is all just a memory, we can do a couple of different things to change our natural daily behaviors that will add up for the greater good. So one thing that's very easy is reusable shopping bags. I keep these in my car so that if I get to the grocery store, I don't forget them. Um, you can take more walks and drive a little less, or if you have to drive, carpool. Um, you know, carpooling makes it a lot better for the environment because if you still gotta drive somewhere, at least pile all those people in the same car to go to the same place instead of using all separate cars. You can plant a vegetable or pollinator garden. Um, I know that if you guys are in Virginia, like me, you might be waiting for that um, average frost date to pass, which I think is Mother's Day this year. Uh, so after that, get planting. Um, use your property as wildlife habitat. If you can provide food, water, safety, and shelter for wildlife, that is really nice for them. They're running out of places to really hunger down and live. 
um, because people are really changing the landscape and we're also taking over the landscape. So if you can um, provide like a little refuge for them um, on your property, that's great. If you can get your whole neighborhood to support wildlife habitat, think about all of the homes that you're creating. Now, I just wanna put a disclaimer. We are the Wildlife Center of Virginia. When I say create food for them, I don't mean put out cat food or scraps of food. I mean, natural food, right? Have plants that drop um, seeds and nuts, have plants that provide nectar, um, all those kinds of things. We can use single, we can use less single use plastics. So this is a really super easy one. Reuse a reusable water bottle. You know, there's no need to buy those big, huge cartons of single use water bottles. Um, just grab a really cool Nalgene or, you know, any other sort of water bottle and use that instead. Um, use reusable sandwich bags. I use these in my house and they are fantastic. I really love that I don't have to throw them out. It makes me feel good when I am able to wash them, dry them, and then put some more snackies in them. Use reusable containers. You know, so when you go through that butter container, check it out. Could you potentially use this for food leftovers next time? If yes, then just stash it away. Make sure you wash it, right? Make your own wet wipes. This was actually inspired by my roommate um, who works at the Wildlife Center as well. And she just yesterday got in a bunch of ingredients for um, cleaner concentrate. And we are going to make our own wet wipes, excuse me, instead of buying them from the store. Um, and that reduces the single use plastics as well. Um, and instead of using paper towels, you can use cloth dish towels. Um, there are so many products out there for reusable kitchen cleaning supplies these days that if you really do a good look, they are pretty compatible to how much money you would spend on paper towels and other cleaning supplies, you know, overall. And you don't have to throw as much out. Um, and then, you know, if you're cleaning, use the sprays instead of the aerosols. That's always better for the environment as well. So I encourage you guys to this year make an Earth Day resolution. I know that resolutions are usually thought of as a New Year's Day sort of thing for the year. But what if we all made an Earth Day 2020 resolution? And in 2021 on Earth Day, we look back and we think about how we did. Maybe that was, I would like to take a walk every day, or maybe it was, I am going to ask my coworker who lives near me to carpool every other day, or I'm going to give up using plastic bags at the store and just use reusable ones. All of those small actions can really add up to a larger impact. And I think that's really important. When you guys think of what you're doing, you know, it can be a little bit, um, grim if you think, oh, well, my efforts are futile, but let this example of what's happening to our earth right now and how our earth is rejuvenating and sort of taking over in the absence of people activity um, as a gleaming example as if we all work together, we can enact real change and we can see results pretty quickly. I know that I get a little um, bored if I don't see results pretty quickly, but I think that this is a really important example that um, you know, maybe that Earth Day 2021 will look back and say, oh my gosh, look at all we did. And I think that's really great. So now um, my colleague Kayla is going to switch over to my live feed and I'm going to take five questions that have been submitted to our moderated chat on our website. So Kayla, just give me a thumbs up when I am live and it's my face. Okay. Hey, everyone. All right, so I am going to do a quick little technology shift here. And I'm gonna mute that pesky noise that was happening so that I am able to hear Kayla. All right, there we go. Oh, sorry, guys. OK, 
Kayla is a technology wizard and she is behind the screen today doing all of our video production for Earth Day. And there's an enormous amount of moving parts, everyone. So I just wanna impress that upon everybody that Kayla is doing a heck of a job today. All right, we're back. Hey everyone. Oh yeah, so um, apparently there's no questions yet, which is great. Maybe that means that my PowerPoint was super complete and you guys have zero wonders, but um, if you'd like to ask me a question, if you're on Facebook and you're watching this, head over to our website um, and jump on the moderated chat so that you can ask some questions um, and I will answer them live here. If you're already on the moderated chat, hit me up with some stuff. Um, I would I would like to go ahead and ask what your plans are for Earth Day after the stream is over or during the outside time later. What are you going to do outside? Yeah. Um, Kayla, could people hear your question? Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Just making sure. So um, during the pandemic, um, all not essential staff um, are working from home. So I'm still essential staff to the organization, but I don't necessarily have to do my job on site. And so I've actually moved everything to my home office, um, which low key is my couch. Um, but we still all um, in the outreach department, Amanda, Alex, and I still every day, once a day, go into the Wildlife Center to feed our education raptors and work with them. So these birds of prey are really highly trained to do their job. And so they need some behavioral maintenance and training um, every day to just make sure that they are in tip top shape. So during the outside time um, and the very end of Ed's talk, I will be headed to the center to do that. Um, and I think today I'm working with Grayson, Gus and Rowan, and potentially also Buttercup. I can't really remember. I have a whole sheet. We have a whole system for this, but yeah. Amazing. So I'll, be, um, I'll be feeding a hawk, an owl, um, and a red-tailed hawk. So I have another question for Lauren. Um, sure. Have you noticed any changes in the area around the Wildlife Center with less people being in and out and out and about? Yeah, that's really interesting. So I actually thought about this before uh, because I was doing all this research, right, of course, and looking at all of these satellite images and all of these striking images like that image from India. Um, and I was thinking, oh, man, I kind of want to see what's happening in my local area. Um, I have not noticed a bunch in Stanton where I live, um, but also I've not been going out that much. But what I have noticed at the Wildlife Center is that um, there are a number of different birds that are singing and they seem to be closer to the building um, than previously. So we back up to the Thomas Jefferson and George Washington National Forest. And so of course there's a lot of habitat for a lot of different critters to live there, but um, it seems as though everybody is just a little bit closer to the building than before. So question. What is, you mentioned about reusing containers that you've purchased. Um, yes. What is, you think, like the most useful thing that you've found that is reusable, like that would be great for anybody to try that you that works for you? Yeah. So um, I actually use glass containers because I am a big fan of using not plastic because eventually when I go to, let's say I drop a Pyrex, right? Um, glass is recyclable 100 times over. You can just keep recycling glass. Plastic actually has a limit to how many times you can melt it down and create it into something else. And so by using glass, although glass lasts like forever in the environment when it's thrown away, if you properly recycle it, it's like the best case scenario for recycling. Um, I know that using, um, reusing food containers is not a new concept to me. Um, growing up, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, um, I can't believe it's not butter, but I think that we at my parents' house have like a hundred of those containers <laughs> because we used to very commonly reuse them. Uh, but anytime I buy, you know, like cream cheese or sprinkle cheese or 
butter, anything that comes in one of those small containers. I usually like to use those for washed berries that I bring home um, or little snacks for when I bring my lunch to work every day, things like that. So I found that's really helpful. And I don't have to buy those things. I already bought it. So why not just put more stuff in it? It's great. Very smart. Um, another question. If you weren't working at all today, how would you choose to celebrate Earth Day? Oh, <laughs> well, okay. So first of all, this um, huge event is my brainchild. I came up with this while I was showering and I was super excited for it. Originally, I was trying to bring the community an in-person um, Earth Day. And we had to, of course, like restructure a little bit and regroup. Um, in light of the pandemic, but I think this is really spectacular. So I am thrilled to be able to do this with you guys. But if I wasn't doing this today, I have a dog, his name is Toast. He only has one eye. And so I would probably be taking him to a park um, where there's not many people or potentially to go walk in the George Washington, um, Thomas Jefferson National Forest. I also love yoga, that's why um, I put that on the schedule for today. So I'd probably take my computer outside and do some yoga in my yard. Um, I have a bunch of herbs and vegetables that are actually living in my bedroom right now because that's the place that we get the best light. And so I'd probably be tending to my in indoor garden until we can plant them um, the week after Mother's Day. Yeah, just anything that really makes me feel grounded and earthy. I think that being in this line of work I am naturally already doing a lot of those things, but um, yeah, today just feels special and I'm very excited about it. Another question we have is, have you noticed bluer skies and cleaner air since we are quarantined and not running out and about? Yeah, so I think that um, because I live in a more rural area of Virginia, you know, we're not right outside of a major metropolitan area like New York City or Philadelphia um, or like Pittsburgh or any of those large cities. I think that we naturally have um, cleaner air simply because there's just less people and everybody's more spread out. Um, but I think that maybe the placebo effect has made me think that the skies are a little bit clearer and bluer. I have noticed that I can see the stars at night like I've never seen them before. So maybe that's tribute to um, the cleaner scare, sky. <laughs> so historically in, in your life, is there any yeah. Earth Day that you've participated in that really stands out for you? Or do you think that this, this year is really special? Or what, tell me a little bit about your history with Earth Day. Yeah, so I... Um, really started appreciating Earth Day, I think, in high school. Um, unfortunately, Earth Day is not something that's like on the forefront of my memory from my lower education years. Um, but that could just be because I just don't remember it. But um, I do know that in college on Earth Day, uh, my school, Washington College, shout out to the Shoreman, uh, did a planting of a campus garden and it was a vegetable garden next to our compost pile. And so I got all up in the dirt and helped to turn the compost pile. I got to plant some trees, I remember. Um, I love trees. I just really love them. I also love plants. I don't know if you guys recognize this plant, but this plant is in the background of a lot of my virtual programs. Um, and so we got to plant flowers and that was just really memorable. It was my whole community um, of eco nerds coming together and you know, just giving back to the planet a little bit. That's great. Um, I don't see any more questions coming through. So if there's anything else you wanted to chat about, we're about at time. Yeah, well, guys, I don't think I have very much more, um, except for to say that I hope that you guys are enjoying the day so far. Um, I know that I feel very great after yoga this morning with Jackie. My back feels really nice. My shoulders are less tense. I think that um, working at my home office has made me a little bit stiff. So adding that movement to my day early on makes me feel really good. Um, and I hope that you guys are able to make an Earth Day resolution and I hope we can meet back up next year and talk about what we did.
that's about it though. So we've got um, crafts up next. I'm gonna make some paper, or I'm sorry, uh, toilet paper roll critters. Um, so if you're waiting around for that, I can't wait. That's gonna be very exciting. I got super into this project. All right, guys. See you later.